there was a point where I was like on the cover of every magazine and like every like I was like the most popular. I would go as far as to say I was the most popular girl in the world at one point. There you go. That's and like the, that's the opener. Literally. <laughs> If any of these go out, we'll just pull over and restart them. Great. Um, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. All right, I'll get right into it. If there's anything you don't want to talk about, we'll bleep it out, we'll cut it. Ladies and gentlemen, on today's episode of Driving with Dave, we're so excited to have reality TV legend, a star of The Bachelor, Bachelor in Paradise, and the hit <laughs> movie, Attack of the Amish. <laughs> She uh, has a self-proclaimed uh, platinum virgin, ladies and gentlemen, Corinne Olympios. How are you? Good. Oh, my God. I'm so excited to be here, and you have coffee for me, so I'm a happy girl. And I already cut a guy off, so it's going to be a great conversation. <laughs> yeah, was that the best <laughs> intro you've ever received? I feel like I nailed that intro. Yeah, you did. The Attack of the Amish was really, really got me. I looked real hard to find a clip of that movie. I'm not in that movie, by the way. Oh, you're not? <laughs> oh, spoiler. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm not in that movie. Why? Why not? I don't know. I'm in a I'm in a couple other movies of the same like genre, so maybe like someone just got confused. I'm in a movie called Reboot Camp that's really close to it. Does it involve the Amish in any way? No, it involves a cult though. Okay. Similar. Similar. Uh, speaking of cults, Bachelor uh, is where I would say you got your initial fame. Yes. Uh, a lot going on. I want to get into all of it here. First, we're doing Starbucks, so let's cheers to this. You're doing a, I think, quadruple shot venti shaken ice espresso with almond milk and cinnamon sprinkled on top. Yes. I got to tell you, I went with the cinnamon just to be on the same wavelength as you. Pretty good. Pretty good choice. It's a great choice. Um, so you get on The Bachelor. Were you watching the show before you were part of it? Or how did that all come about? Nick Vial season. So I... I started watching um Caitlin Bristow season okay and me and my friend decided we were going to watch that and that was going to be our thing every week and we were going to watch it and we got so into it as one does and she signed me up secretly for it and how quick were you fast tracked were you like on board the next season or well, yeah, I got a call pretty soon after, I guess. And I, I thought it was a joke. So I like hung up on them. And then they called, sorry, it's actually been like a really long time. <laughs> and I'm just like, whoa, I'm just thinking about it. It's been six years. Well, you know what I love um, is that you, we don't know much about you from the Bachelor world as of late. You've kind of moved on and done your own thing. So yeah. I'm sure this is a lot of wounds being torn open for you. Yeah, this is weird. You know, I mean... I talk about it a lot, obviously, because that's like where mainly people know me from is The Bachelor. And, you know, people come up to me and they're still like, oh, my God, are you Corinne from The Bachelor? And I'm like, yes. Um, Do you, is that happen a lot? Yeah, pretty, it does. Yeah, you're pretty recognizable. Yeah. I think for I think for a while I wasn't because I dyed my hair dark. Yeah, that'll do it. Sorry, I'm still waking up a little bit. Wake I'm up, like, wake up. I, um... <laughs> I know, like, take um, it out. I had to come from near downtown, so I'm. I've already recorded two videos this morning. I'm a. I'm oh my a, god! I'm an early riser. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just. I'm like, my brain is just coming to. No worries. So where were we? Okay, so yeah. So, so yeah, so you just got fast tracked. You thought it wasn't for real. Yeah, or? and then it was, and then they were like, "You need to come in and meet us in person. You don't have to wait in a line. Like, we want to meet you." So I like went to this place in Fort Lauderdale and like met with these people. I had a cast on my hand because me and my sister got into a fist fight <laughs> and she shattered my pinky and I had to have six surgeries to reconstruct it. I have broken it. pinkies myself. Yeah. Do you have a broken pinky? Is it still Yeah, I broken? do. Look at when it, it like Oh my God. Show the, show the camera. That's... <laughs> it like it like poops out on the side yeah, of it. Yeah, there you go. So um, that's, a, that's a sibling dynamic right there, a, mm -hmm. a fist fight. I mean, we have one big fight once a year and then it's, that's it. Do you, t do you know when it's coming? Is it yes, like Thanksgiving? Do. Let's go. It builds up for like a week. <laughs> and then, a volcano. and then, <laughs> yeah, it builds up for a week and then we erode. So there's like scientists that are like, oh boy, Corinne's meter is about to blow. Yeah. Fucking take what were you, cover. What were you fighting over? I, I could not tell you. Have you ever fought over a boy? Or no, 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 no. No, no, no Eskimo twins? No, 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 no. Are you no. sure? Yes. Let's get her on the line here. What's the age difference? 
nine years. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I mean, she, no, I mean, we like literally hang out with the same people, do everything together. We live together in Miami. Um, yeah. You're hanging out with Scott Disick. We saw <laughs> that was in the news. Um, mm-hmm. I call myself the poor man, Scott Disick, uh, discount Disick is what I've been told. Scott is just one of the best people like on the planet. Really? Yeah. I think he's really just like misunderstood or like no one really knows him, but like he's honestly just like such the nicest, sweetest guy ever. So were you, did you date or were you just friends? Cause, because obviously there's a photo that was of, you were like the girl in the back of his, of, of a car and you know, everyone's like, that's Corinne from The Bachelor. Mm. Yeah. So we hung out in Miami and yeah. He's just a nice man. I know, I try not to judge anyone from a reality TV edit because obviously they're trying their best to yeah. get the most out of the situation. How did you feel about your edit on The Bachelor? I mean, fine. <laughs> because that that's me. That's who I am. Yeah. Did we, are we okay? Yeah, we're okay, yeah. Oh, it's a red light. I thought it was a stop sign. I, was then like... I thought it was a stop sign. I was like, maybe, I, maybe I'm the one who needs coffee. Uh, what a nice neighborhood this is. Great? Like, this is like so cute. We're just going to cruise around and um, keep it on the nice smooth roads. Sorry, I feel like I'm making you jump around a lot and I no, don't mean to do that. I'm I just have, really, my brain is like... My brain is right with you and the audience will buckle up and they'll they'll get on board. I'll tie it all together. Don't worry. Yeah. So you on Nick Nick season were... Yeah. I'll call it sex positive. Would you agree? Are you a sex positive person? You're oh yeah. I'm a about. Scorpio. I, sex is my weapon. I will never not flirt with people. I just, I, that's just me. How did that play with the other ladies of the season? Well, they just didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. They just I... didn't like it. They were mad when I was napping. They were mad when I was awake and stealing their mans. So, you know, I was like, make a decision. I'm either going to nap or I'm going to steal your man. Yeah. You can't steal a man while you're napping. That's yeah. a, you know, that's, that, that they should be happy that you're taking. Some exactly. Care. I was doing you a favor. So what's your nap schedule? Like I, I really like, you know, I didn't nap yesterday and I was so extremely overtired, like hyper by the end of my dinner meeting. And I was like, see, they, well, I, I get mean, a little crazy when I don't nap. Isn't that funny that but I do nap every day, but that's the number one thing that reality producers will, will do is keep you from sleeping yeah. in order to elicit that responses that you make when you're cranky. So you, I mean, you know, you, uh, we would have, uh, you know, you, you were getting your sleep when you could. And I mean, but when uh, I feel like on a show like that, they'll use whatever they can against you. So if you're sleeping, then that's the thing. But, um, so there are a, there's a spectrum of audience in the bachelor world from people that are super into purity culture, save it to all your marriage and this and that to people that are more sex positive. Were you surprised by any responses you got from audience because you were candid about your sexuality and your, your, uh, Scorpio weapon or whatever you want to call it? Um, I remember this one time, um, I was walking in New York city and like a group of guys like screamed out like slut at me. And like, that was the only negative thing I've ever seen. And I was just a like, group of guys. yeah. And I was just like, ew, like you wish you could have me like <laughs> have a great fucking day. Sorry. I use the F word a lot. Just no, yell at me. That's okay. That's okay. Now I'm surprised because I feel like a lot of slut shaming is women on women. Yeah. Uh, I think I honestly like it was so nice to like women come up to me and they're like, you literally like made me more confident and like made me feel like I can be sexual and like be sex forward and like ask a guy out on a date. Because I talk about this a lot. Like a lot of the dates that I go on, I'm asking the guys on a date. Okay. Like I don't wait for anybody. If I want something, I go for it and I do it. And like, you know, a lot of my friends are like, I'd like, I could never do that. And like, I just don't think that works. And like, you should let the guys come to you and like, you have to play hard to get. And I just, I get any guy I want because I just go for it. And they're like, I don't understand. Like the other day we were at a party and like my friends were like, like these, I mean, it was nuts. Like this was, this was a particularly, I I cannot say that word. (laughs) And I I had this problem at a meeting last night and it was really cute. I have a speech impediment myself. So I mess up words all the time. Particularly, particularly. That works. Okay. Um, (laughs) 
um, this weekend. It was a, it was a very strange situation, but guys were just flocking to me at this party because I was just giving off good energy and confidence and talking to everyone. And like, if you, you give, you get what you give. So if you're giving confidence and sex forward and I mean, not that you're just going to like, you know what I mean? Yeah, sure. You, you know where this is going. No, of course. But, but yeah. Some, so. And if some people can't handle that, then you better find out right away. Yeah. Now, the, the, the issue is, I guess, I guess to push back is that men like to, and this, this, you know, whenever you kind of generalize, people get all up in arms, but I feel like men do like to hunt, you know what I mean? Which yes. is, which that, that doesn't mean that if you're, if you're like sex positive and forward that you're just like giving yourself up. To no, someone. absolutely just, not. And there's a big misconception about that. Okay. So what type of guy do you go after? Do you have a type? I don't have a type looks wise. I have a type personality wise. Funny, outgoing, confident. Okay. Like, like the guys at the party this weekend. And what, uh, like, so what, what was your move to break into them? Cause that's the, well, the icebreakers. Well, I was just kind of like talking to everybody. And then one of the guys came over and like, spun me around and dipped me and spilled his entire drink on me. And he's like, well, I was trying to play it really cool. So just ignore the drink that spilled all over your face. And I thought it was so funny. And I was like, you're in. He's in. Yeah, he's now, in. So what's the move, you know, the, the old Seinfeld reference, like you want to go up, up to my apartment to get coffee. What's the, what's the modern move there for like, are we going to take this to the next step? Or do you just pick up or is it just kind of implied? I'm always like, should we dinner? Okay. Let's dinner. Do you make him buy you dinner first? No, I always like offer to pay for dinner because I'm not going to ask a guy on a date and then make them pay for dinner. So, okay. And if a guy asks you on a date, is he obligated for dinner then? Like, like to, to pay? No. I mean, I, I don't ever expect anyone to pay for anything when they offer and they insist. I think it's very nice. And that's what a man going on a date should do. Yeah. But I always offer to pay as well. I feel like when men pay, it can lead to an entitlement that they shouldn't have that they're owed a kiss or whatever at the end of the night. So it's kind of nice if you are kind of like taking the initiative that, that there's, no I've way. never actually been in a situation where I felt, felt like the guy was expecting a kiss. Okay. Yeah. I feel like it's, it's really, I mean, geez, I'm, I'm, I've been in. A so you expect so a kiss if you pay for dinner. <laughs> no, but it's like, there's, there is an expectation that comes along with, with time investment and money is a form of time. So like, when but you have to get to know someone. No, of course. Of course. Conversation. I just, I'm not saying it's the right thing, but I'm not surprised when it's like, what would you expect? He took you on a date. Like, but I think it's ridiculous when a guy will like Venmo request for the money afterwards. If she, if oh, <laughs> cause you see oh, that all the time. my God. <laughs> oh my God. So that wouldn't be uh that wouldn't uh, get the, the lady. I went going. on a date with another reality star and what he asked me to Venmo him for some of the dinner after the date. And I, when I tell you I never went out with him again, I didn't. What? I just uh, think that's so tacky. Franchise was he from? I can't. Survivor? I cannot say <laughs> okay. no. All right. Although I just shot well, um, I do, I do a have show. A game. I do have a game where we call Bleep That Boy. And, okay. if, and if you want to burn that now, we can bleep it. But you don't have to. I do a full face bleep and audio bleep. If you want to just like get it We can bleep. Chest. Okay. Okay. You want to do the bleep? So... So we'll do the burn that uh, bleep that boy. So who was it that Venmo requested you? Wait, this is going to be bleep. A hundred percent. So no one's even going to know. Nope. Just me. And they'll get my reaction and then they can speculate. I was at, you know what? I'm not surprised. I was, I was actually going to guess him. Really? I, I was. Did he, so he must've reached out to you. I really just like am disappointed in the bachelor fr franchise. So like I stopped watching it. I just don't think the no, show fair. is about like finding love anymore. I think it's about who wants to be the next influencer. And like, I really think like it really took a turn after like my season. And, and I don't care what that sounds like because it's true. And like, I just feel like a lot of people like really just like wanted to like, like go on and be a character like I was on there, but it doesn't work because that's just me. I wasn't playing a character. I was just, me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like when they were casting Demi and they were casting other people to like take place in me, are we literally just driving in squares? Yes. Oh, 
Is that all right? Yeah. I just like, I was getting really confused. I'm like, why? <laughs> like where? <laughs> okay. Just burning tracks in this, in this circle. Here. Love this. So, so yeah, no, I don't disagree. You were a part of the golden age of like Instagram. So mm-hmm. after your season and a few seasons after that, people were getting million Instagram followers. Yeah. Now they're not even breaking six figures, which is pretty wild. I yeah. Think. Now, how much did he Venmo request you for? Like a hundred bucks. Did you kiss at the end of the night? We did. Oh, you even kissed and you still Venmo requesting you. Biggest, biggest <laughs> BDE ever. Yeah? Mm. Did it pay off? I'm not saying anything happened, but I saw it. Okay. Giant. Really? Scary. Scary? Scary. So there's a size that's two BDE. Oh, oh my God. I was like, I don't know what you want me to do with that thing. Because wow. I'm not. I'm not. Uh, that's impressive. You know, my um, w- the first two penises I ever saw um, were yours. Well, aside from mine, okay, was a friend, a couple friends. Yeah, and they were to this day some of the biggest penises I've ever seen. <laughs> so I thought I had it in my head that all penises were that size, and they're not. No, they're not. And I've seen hundreds, if not thousands, of penises, locker rooms, this and that, yeah. porns, whatever. They're everywhere. Even in the porns, I've only seen several penises that match the size of the two that I saw as a as a young teen. And that's damaging to a to a boy to think that because mine's not theirs, which I'm talking weapons. Oh yeah, yeah. Weapons. Yeah. No, some are just like downright scary. And you know, that is not what all girls want. It's not. Right. I'd rather a average size because it fits in the space better and it's more likely that you will orgasm when it fits in the space because you're better. not doing a you know knocking in the knocking on oh, the back of the wall oh my god like shit. yeah yeah no i got you i got you i um so okay so that's that's a very interesting story how'd you guys meet did he slide in your dms this guy seems like a real uh maneuver of the reality world yeah no he's a sweet sweet guy too sweet guy okay nothing wrong with him really sweet guy just a serial dater i feel like yeah. every time i look on his instagram i feel like he's on a new date and i'm just like oh are you looking for long term and where do you stand right now relationship wise i am single i'm talking to i'm dating um but single um, and no. I really just like want, like, I'm getting to the point, like, listen, I'm a girl that loves to, sorry, I'm jumping around, but I'm a girl that loves to be single because I love to flirt and I love, I just love going out and like flirting with everyone, not being tied to anyone. And just like, I'm always in a relationship I feel like, and like, I'm finally single again and like enjoying my time. And now I'm getting the itch to like really find a man that like is going to like love me and like. Just, I don't know. And it's just hard because I feel like it's getting harder and harder to find people now. And it sucks. Yeah, there's, well, I mean, they can Google you too. So do you think, I mean, is that like. And that's so bad. Like, so bad. Your your celebrity net worth on Google is $22 million. So maybe there's a reason why he's Venmo requesting you. Well, maybe. <laughs> he's like, all right, here we go. I mean, that's that's my family. That's yeah, no, not well, just no, me, I mean, but... you know, in some, you know, that's uh, it's just one of those things. Whenever you search people, it's always like uh, Corinne Olympios feet. Corinne Olympios net worth feet. It's, feet's always a big one. Yeah. Ew, it's a big one. Uh... Um, so has your? I wanted to ask you this uh, because I'll, I'll, I want to be completely fair. I feel like I've been relatively tough on you in my YouTube coverage, which you probably haven't seen. I have seen it because well. I feel, and again, this is my own insecurity growing up like middle, lower middle class. You made a video about my OnlyFans and like, I don't really promote my OnlyFans because like, I don't really like, like I, I like to take lingerie photos. Like again, I'm very sex forward. I'm a sexy lover person, whatever. And I like to do it. I enjoy it. Like I probably would have been a stripper if like I wasn't a reality star. Like, I like the attention from guys. I like to be in my underwear. I like to feel beautiful and sexy and hot and pretty. And, like, but I just don't promote it on my page because of TV things. And, like, a lot of places won't work with you or, like, whatever if you're doing that. But, like, I don't feel like that's fair. So, like, I'm still going to do it, but I'm not going to flaunt it all over my Instagram. So I was like, oh, he really did that. Sorry. sorry. It's okay. I was like, it's really out there, but well, we because like, this... I'm going to be working with some family 
driven network soon. So like, I'm trying to keep that DL. Oh yeah. We'll get into that. Um, but uh, it is, we call it barrel scraping season where there's not much going on in the bachelor world. So, oh yeah. Like, so usually... you're just trying to figure out anything that's like, yeah, when there I saw that about. you were on OnlyFans, I said, Oh, interesting. But again, no judgment whatsoever. You know, a lot of, did you subscribe? I didn't No. I didn't, but I do, know no, other, I do know other, I, I do know Is other people. Is there something in front of me? Uh, no, that's the, um. That's just on there? Yeah, that's just on there. I was just like looking at it. I'm like, <laughs> no, am I going to be blocked? You're going to look fantastic. I'm going to shoot. I'm going to, let me move this over a tiny bit for you. I'm going to shoot the shit out of you right now. So you're going to look great. Um, no, I didn't buy it. Although I, I do know people in the bachelor community that did based on my video. I don't want any commission. I won't Venmo request any money for you, but they said, they were like, wow, it's only $7 and 99 cents. They were actually surprised that it was uh, modestly priced. Well, honestly, I, all I do. Well, yeah, I, I can't really comment on this right now. No, but no yeah, that's great. Great. Yeah. I mean, uh, I think it's, fa I mean, cause, uh, OnlyFans has a lot of comedians and other content cooking channels. Like they really are sort of moving into a yeah. broader market. But my my wife is a model and she does. You're married? Yeah, I got a. Yep. Yeah, oh go. my God. I did not know that. Yeah, I got married in the fall. How's that look? <gasps> Congratulations. Thank it's you. gorgeous. Thank, well, I mean, what do you know? It's a, it's a ring. The, the man never gets anything special, right? Um, but uh, her ring's nice. We, we found a nice. Uh, um, ring from the 1800s. Oh, we found wow. A, a diamond. It was a, a couple carats from the 1800s and it was re factored into a new ring, like remounted or whatever. And because she loves like vintage stuff. Me so. too. I have a vintage yeah. company. Oh, amazing. Yeah. You, like, oh, yeah, you have vintage jewelry, don't you? I have vintage everything. Vintage everything? I'm wearing a vintage t shirt. Oh, there you go. And I you... love anything vintage Looney Tunes. I'm a Looney Tunes. Vintage Looney Tunes? There you go. Um, so anyway, yeah, so she has model lingerie and nudity, and implied nudity, I guess it's called, mm -hmm. where you're covering stuff up. And when we started dating, I, I was a little, I don't want to say jealous, but I, w I knew, I know what male photographers can be like. Yeah. I know anyone can pick up a camera and just try to get you nude. And then when you're in there and they always like, you know, past your comfort zone, you don't feel like you have someone advocating for yourself. Yeah. So like, I've always been on the cautious side of that. But as far as like, the female, like as far as female sexuality goes, I'm always telling my wife to like flaunt it more than she, than she wants to, not that she doesn't want to, but like, I think sometimes like she comes from the Midwest and she's, she grew up in some of that purity culture where like she wasn't allowed to wear like a, a bikini to like a church pool party. Oh or yeah, yeah. Teens, like ridiculous stuff like that. So I'm always like, honey, show it off, you know? And, um, that's so, so nice. I love that you're so supportive. Yeah. But I mean, I think it's because you just want everyone. Oh, wow. What? That okay. is. Yeah. That's vintage. That, that is something. <laughs> that's some vintage Santa Claus uh, pajamas. Wow. Um, so. Well, no, go ahead. That's why I, um, I work with one photographer and I've been working with him for almost eight years. He is one of my best friends. He is just the best. I'm, I, he's seen me, all of me and just is so respectful is just, uh, that's, I only work with him oh, and good. he's the only one that takes my photos. His name is Jordan Crate. Beep. Shout out Jordan. That's Shout out to Jordan. Name. No, that's But good. yeah, all the girls want to shoot with him now because because he, he takes the best photos. Well, that's the thing too. He really it? does. He's the best. There you go. And it's good word of mouth to know that a uh, model is comfortable and all of that. Yeah. Do you shoot your own for your um, vintage line? Do you like model your own clothes for the website or whatever? Mm -hmm. What's the website? 1115 vintage. 11 is spelled with two L's. So it's E L L E V E N one five vintage.com. What is 1115? Is that your birthday? So I'm 11 and my sister's 15 oh, and we go. own it together. And that's, is that what you fight over? Do you <laughs> no, we never fought over work, honestly. So, okay. It's always something stupid like the dishes. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. It's never like a big deal. It's like these fucking mugs, bitch. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the dumbest thing ever. Oh, how funny. So I wanted, I started to ask about this, um, uh, uh, my, my judgment of you, which again is completely, uh, you know, I, like I shouldn't n judge anyone who comes from a wealthy family, but I feel like naturally that happens. Do you feel like people judge you that you come from a wealthy family? Like as if, I mean, it's not your... I mean, I did for a while, but a, a lot of, like, like a lot of people were like, you don't work, like you don't have to work. And like, oh yeah. Like, you know, when I would post about like doing things, 
they're like, oh, you're not actually working like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, my dad literally was the toughest on me growing up. Like when I worked for the company, when I started the show, like he was really, really tough on me. And I like barely got paid. I mean, he, I mean, like I was always taken care of obviously, but like he made me work. Like he really did. Oh, like, sure. And he was so tough on me. Like, he'll still call me every day and be like, how many emails did you send out for 1115 today? How many emails did you send out for Aura Sugar today? Did, you know, I'm starting a podcast. Oh, nice. And so um, he's like, did you look at all the headlines today? Like, he'll call me and be like so tough on me still to this day and like pushes me, pushes me, pushes me. And like, that's why I love working so much. So... Yeah, and he the, made me this way. The fact it's not he, like I had everything handed to me because I didn't. Yeah, and the fact is, is everyone goes through different types of adversity. I've got um, my brother actually works for my both my brothers work for the family business, and my I have uh, cousins that work for their dads, and I actually see the burden that can exist when collaborating with your family. And it's just different. It's everyone's faced with different levels of adversity. Um, but how did it, so you talked a lot about on, you, you talked on the show about having a nanny. How, how was your, uh, upbringing compared to say your friends? Were you guys all in the same social? Yeah, it was all, it was all the same. We were like where I grew up in New Jersey. It was, it was, it, yeah. Like I, there was, I didn't really see any difference. And my dad actually, drove me to where he grew up once in Jersey city. He came from nothing and, um, showed me, he's like this, like you're fortunate. And like, you know, other people don't live the way you live. And like, did that whole thing for me. And like, I was like, Whoa. Yeah. I love this saying, um, for certain people, like they, they, they started on third base and thought they hit a triple. And it's just the idea that some people just start off closer to a finish line than others, but it's all subjective. And it's all like, anyone in the U S is top 3% wealth in the world. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what I mean? So like we all kind of live in different, um, uh, uh, we all have different privileges. I get to walk around as a white guy. You, you know, you're, you know, you know what I mean? Like, like it's, it's not bad, but, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean adversity doesn't exist. And, and, um, what does adversity mean again? It just, just struggles that you have throughout through your life. Like, yeah. like I would imagine your adversity is more like making a name for yourself and not just being the girl from the bachelor. I don't mean to project on you, but no. Yeah. No. I mean, listen, like I've definitely That's like, crazy. by the way, I want to tell you something, this car right here, I just bought it yesterday. Oh, you did? Yeah, I bought it. Yep. I bought a Tesla Y for my driving show. Oh, that's so fun. Congratulations. First, thank you. It's the first new car I've ever bought. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, it was a big treat for myself with stand up and getting around. I was like, I want a car with a good sound system and something that I can shoot content in. So that's so good. fun. I'm so excited for you. Did, did, is it here yet? No, it's, it's you got to order it and then it comes in in the next few weeks. Comes in the mail. Yeah. So sorry that we're, you're stuck in the Prius, which by the way, I, I did, love it. I, I love it in here. It's great. When, um, when I told some of my audience that I was going to be interviewing you, mm -hmm. the first thing someone said was, is she going to be okay getting into a Prius? Oh my God. That is ridiculous. Have you been in a Prius before? Yes. I've been in a Prius before. In, in an Uber? Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, but I've also rented one. Okay. No, I didn't rent one. <laughs> that's all I they, didn't that's rent all one. Had. My friend rented one and the then I was in it. You wanted the Mercedes G wagon, but they only had a Prius. So that's what you took. I don't care about that. I really don't care. A lot of people think like I only eat at fancy places and I only drive fancy cars. Hey, you're wearing a Looney Tunes shirt with Converse. Chuck yeah, Chuck. I'm a very chill, regular person. Person. Yeah. And look, you can't, the, the reason I bring it up and it's kind of a weird conversation is because we, I think collectively in our society, we're, we are kind of weird with money and we, I hate people that are weird about money. It's <laughs> yeah. like not a big deal. Yeah. I mean, it shouldn't be, but there's a lot of people that can't get out of that sort of, I don't know, that rut or that struggle. I come from a single mom who like had to work and raise us. So we were in some ways not neglected, like she did the best she could, but we yeah. lived, we lived in a town in Rhode Island where like, you can kind of just run around. It was a very safe town. So we kind of just like raised ourselves in the, in the like neighborhood. But because you had a nanny, did you have like, what was your relationship? I think with your the parents? whole nanny thing is so like misunderstood. She yeah. was literally like my housekeeper. <laughs> like she's just been with my family for a really long time. She's a loyal, loyal woman. She like raised my sister. My mom was really sick with cancer when my, me and my sister were growing up. Oh, I'm sorry to hear my that. dad was 
in the hospital with her all the time and she took care of us and she stuck with us and she loves my sister because she was around. My sister was really small and she like raised my sister. Basically she's like my sister's other mom. And like, of course she's, I'm very close to her too, but like she literally moved with her husband from New Jersey when we moved to Florida like, oh, sweet. to be with us because we treat her well and we love her and like we're, you know, we respect her and she's not just a housekeeper. So yeah. that's why I call her a nanny because I'm not going to be like, oh, she's my cleaning lady. Like, no. Yeah. I heard you say that in an interview and that made a lot of sense. But, but again, like I said, this is just a bachelor audience. I don't feel this way, but this is a bachelor audience. I can be judgy. Oh, here. Well, I'm glad young... we get to clear all these things up, honey. Clear it up with that big venti, venti coffee energy. Um, oh, so how's it good. Going? good. Yeah. You're really working your way through it. I know. Oh, look let's, at you. There let's you reveal. Go. Yeah. Your fuel. You're on Bye -bye. Three, three eighths of a tank here. I know I'm on my second coffee. So I went with a smaller one. I didn't want us to get confused here. Um, oh, so good. So how, how do you think our chat's going so far? I love it. I like, don't want it to end. Can okay. we keep going? We'll, we'll do like 10 more minutes if that's okay. Um, so you, you're wearing, um, can you, can you show those to the camera or do you not flex well enough here? So you got the chucks on. Now that leads us into our next conversation about Nick Vial because I feel like he wears chucks a lot. You were on his season of The Bachelor. I was. And how, do you guys have any sort of relationship as far as friends or communicate at all? Uh, I love his fiance. I think she's so nice. We chat here and there. Um, I run into them all the time at music festivals. I saw them at Coachella. I mean, Coachella, Stagecoach. Um, yeah, just very casual, very, they're both so kind and nice. And I, Nick did my show last year with me and, um, I've done his podcast and yeah. Was there any weirdness coming off the season? Because, you know, obviously he's engaged to someone now that was a different yeah. fiance, but this is several years ago and you and him were intimate on the show you i believe guys were paired up as a uh, adam and eve is that right you were in your adam and eve outfits no 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 do i have someone else yeah you so then you were that i was went topless uh, yeah in the pool and topless in the pool was um so was there any weirdness um after that season like any communication with him while he was with his then fiance or well like, yeah well, so, like, how does that all work so out? so he was mad at me for a little while and i didn't know why and it was because on one so this is actually really funny. So I posted a photo on my Instagram for Monday night. Like I was just like, oh, it's Monday. And I posted a photo of me and Nick. And people took that as it was a recent photo of me and Nick as like a hard launch of him and I being together. And I, it was my fault because I didn't think of it like that. I was like, oh, it's just Monday. Like I was just posting an old. So you got a text from him? No, I didn't even get a text from him. I found out he was like mad because he was like, I ran into him at Craig's one night and he was like pissed. What's and Craig's? like didn't really talk to me. What? What's Craig's? A restaurant. Oh, okay. In LA? Yeah. Was and, it, is this recently that you posted this? No, no, no. This was 2019. Okay. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, it, it, or 2018. You, but yeah, he, yeah. But then I cleared the air. I was like, I really didn't mean it like that. And like, it was right when him and Vanessa broke up. And like, it was just like, it was like, it was a harmless thing that I now look back and I'm like, wow, that was, I get it. Yeah. But it, yeah. Well, it's gotta be so tough being the lead where he's trying to make a relationship work, but it only works after he's experimented with others. Did you, did you think you had a shot with him or was it just like a sexy? No, we, we had a lot of really nice conversations that weren't aired. Um, that didn't make air, but we had, a, we had a lot of really nice conversations and yeah, I think, I think there at the time it was, it was going well. You know, it's so, it's so crazy to think of you because you're, you're, you were like, I mean, I, I hate to use the term villain because I think it's overly charged, but you know, you were kind of edited in a way that would, would you call yourself a villain of the show? In the beginning? Yeah. Like the first two episodes. Yeah. I was definitely edited to be a villain, but I mean that, that I was just being me, but like. I also was just doing and saying like normal things, like what everyone was thinking. Like when the cameras would turn on, these girls would turn into like these, like, like robots. And I'm like, you don't need to be that serious. Just be yourself. Yeah. The cameras make things weird, don't they? Yes, they do. And not everyone's comfortable in front of a camera and what you say can be used against you. Yeah. You're like, but, and then that's, that's on the lead and the audience to really sift through who's authentic. Yeah. And now what you notice with, kind of starting with the Hannah Brown era is that you've got a lot of pageant queens 
uh, being cast on the show. And it's no knock on her or anyone else who's been in pageants, but they are trained to be poised in a certain way. And I would say you you represent, and I'm sure you've got like lifelong fans because of it. You represent an authenticity, which is this is what I'm thinking, and I'm going to say it. Yeah. And that just doesn't vibe with everybody who it wants doesn't, a magical but... show. Yeah. So that era of your life is over. I saw in an interview recently, you said you're like, did you, how, how did you do during the pandemic? Were you all, all right? Well, like, well, like how, how's oh, your God. life and where are you right now? Well, yeah, I was like miserable during the pandemic. I gained like 23 pounds. Wow. I'm sure you've seen photos of me from that era of I, my life. I, I, I dyed my hair brown. I gained 23 pounds and I was like a mess. And, um, yeah, that was interesting. I just didn't realize how miserable I was. And then finally I like moved home and like woke up and. Why were you miserable? I just, I was dealing with a very like horrible dating situation and like the family was horrible. And like, I just was treated, there was always drama and I was always stressed out. And like, I was expected to just like, have dinner on the table by the time everybody got home and like do laundry every day. And like, if I would like go out with my friends or have a drink, like it was like frowned upon. And like, there were a lot of, like a lot of things that just like, yeah. So how did you get out of that? What do you credit to your coming out of that darkness? I, I really don't know, but thank God it happened. Oh, I'm happy for you. Thank you. Yeah. I wasn't, no, I, I, I perused your Instagram and maybe I'm an idiot, but I didn't notice any differences. I mean, that's, you know, I hit it very well. Jared takes a good photo. You couldn't tell, you know, um, Jordan, 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 sorry. <laughs> my bad. So uh, one thing that is really like, I, I want to like actually say this cause I, I like, this has been happening to me a lot. When people meet me, they're like, holy shit. You are really, really short. People think I'm like this tall, oh, actually really? the other day someone said they were, they thought I was this tall Amazonian <laughs> Zoftic big woman. And I think that's just because of my personality, but I am five feet tall. Five flat, huh? Yeah. Wow. Five. There you go. No, I would have picked you for that. And I didn't, I didn't size you up yet since I was in the car here. I like to get the initial reaction of you entering the car. Like I like to get that car vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I want audiences to feel. How was my entrance? It was great. Fantastic. A plus. I was, I'll I'll be honest. I was telling my wife this. I was really, I I was really excited to interview you. I did not think you'd want to do this. And I think that's like a real testament to your, I don't know, personality to just like do some things because I don't have a gigantic following. Although you know the channel is doing well. By the way, can I can I share something with you? Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna humble break here before we go back into you. I got interviewed by Time Magazine this week. Wow. How fucking weird is that? That's awesome. I don't know how much is gonna be in the article because sometimes they use more or less or whatever. But that was the first time I could like tell my mom, and she was like, "Whoa, Time Magazine!" Like like they don't know what else. They don't really. That's get... so awesome. Yeah, I was like, "Oh shit, this is weird, right?" Um, it's but exciting. It, it was exciting. I was like, all right, don't fuck this up. And Congratulations. Hopefully... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, you. when you do like you and like you're pursuing things and like you're doing things, people notice you, you're going to receive what you're giving to the world. So there you go. You're a big law of attraction person. I can tell here. Am, I guess I am. Yeah. I mean, I believe in energy. You know, I, when people will leave me a shitty comment, if I respond, I just give them the same energy they gave me. Yeah. And so often it pisses the hell out of people. Oh yeah. It pisses them off. And I'm like, I'm just giving you back this bullshit you gave me. Like, what exactly. You but when I do it, if you do it on stage as a in stand up audiences will cheer for that. And I call it like cracking an egg to make an omelet. Like you can, you can make, if someone wants to say something stupid, I can give it right back to you and make you look dumb in front of the whole class. But online, a lot of people get away with those negative comments. Have you had to deal with any, like any mental health problems from the negativity that can come from being in reality? Yeah. Yeah. So the, I don't really ever talk about this, but I, there was a t- like, yeah. I've definitely had a lot of really, really low lows. Like it, it got really bad for a little bit, but I've definitely struggled with mental health issues. Um, and I feel like people like, that's also something people don't really know about me. Like I, I, I have times where I'm like, what am like? Yeah. Is it, it's it bad. is there a, is there some, like what triggers you? Is it, um, if people comment on your body or on your character, yeah, it's, it's always, it's always body driven. Never anything about sex. I could give two shits. Like if I want to have sex with someone, I'm going to, but, 
And I don't care what you think about that. But like, I think also like, I'm just so like scarred from that weight gain that I didn't even know at the time. Like I didn't realize, like I was fully buying like different size clothing. And I was like in denial that I gained weight. Like it was so weird. And like, there's nothing wrong with gaining weight. It was more of like where my mental was with it. Like I was in denial about it. I was so unhappy that I was just like, I would eat like boxes of like, it was nuts. Yeah. That's, that's my family is, uh, my mom and myself. We kind of like, will cope with food. Yeah. Like, I don't have a drinking problem. I don't have a drug problem. Yeah. It's just food is my thing. Whether I had a good audition or a bad audition, I want that slice of pizza after. Mm-hmm. And it kind of sucks to not, to try for me to try to avoid like indulging in that way because I know, I've learned it doesn't help my brain. But like you said, the, this people sizes, it's, that's not what matters. It's the fact that it, it can be a representation of what's going on on the inside. Yeah. So it can be a representation of you not feeling the love or, or whatever. And I'm, I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Um, Thank you. But I do believe we're given enough to handle and to learn from. And I do believe we get the same problems over and over until we overcome them, like kind of a video game level type of thing. Yeah. So have you felt like you've learned a lot about um, what your triggers are and like what makes you feel that way? A hundred percent. And I, whenever I get in that place in my head, I'm like, I like pinpoint what it is and like, just say like, it's, you know, this is what is making you upset you know what it is. Like, let's take a moment back because tomorrow you're going to feel different. It's not that big of a deal. You know, like I, I bring myself back to like reality. And that's a good way to put it. Bring yourself back to reality. Cause yeah. obviously reality TV pulls you from reality <laughs> into a different world. Yeah. By the way, isn't this neighborhood beautiful? It's so go- I was just lo- like, it's so gorgeous. We literally drive down here all the time. And it's just so pretty. Where do you us. live? We're at East of downtown right now. And we were in Silver Lake, but as our dog has gotten older, we had to get out of our apartment and we got out just in time because he can't walk much anymore. <gasps> oh. Yeah. We like push him around in a dog stroller. Ooh, how he's, old is he's he? He's 14 and a half. And what kind of dog is he's he? He's a basset hound Ooh. and he's a big boy too. And he's super, um, yeah, he's like 55 pounds. He's a big boy, but his back legs, like he can still like limp around, but we take him on hikes and stuff so he can get all of his smells in, which is like really good for them to like see and smell things. Oh. But um, yes, yeah, so we live in a first floor place with a little backyard now. But, That's so cute. Yeah, we're looking to buy something and if it's in LA, it's in LA or East Coast. We'll what does your wife do? Uh, she, she works primarily as a fit model. So she tries on clothes for companies and then they size, they mass produce based on her size. So, so she's just like, if you make so gorgeous. Yeah, she's pretty. Yeah, she's gorgeous. Um, she, her and I are like, she's, she's meant for me. I'm meant for her. Oh, it's that's a, amazing. Yeah. And, See, um, I want that. Yeah. And I think, and again, my twenties were me running around New York and like, you know, until I had something I wanted to fight for, I didn't fight. And I feel like, those are the types of things that happen real fast when they're meant to. You yeah. know what I mean? They happen real fast. Sadly, in Los Angeles and in entertainment, you don't always get the people that are kind of ready to settle down because I think a lot of times we're all chasing a, I don't know, we're ch- it's like we're chasing our tails. Like we're looking for something that doesn't exist. So, um, like, what's your ideal guy? So I know you said it physically doesn't matter, but, like, could yeah. you move out of a city for a guy? Or- I, I Yeah, I've done it. Oh, really? Yeah, I moved to Scottsdale for a guy. Oh, is that the, was that the bad? Yeah. 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 Scottsdale will do it. Yeah. I like, I spent like $40,000 traveling back and forth to New York for my ex that lived in the city. When I lived here, you should I Venmo request him for that for 40 grand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Just slide it across to Just him. like a casually. Just, yeah. You can do a monthly yeah. payment if you want. That's so funny. Yeah, and I actually put a deposit down on an apartment to move in with him to the city. And then last minute, I was just like, I, this is not for me. You got the vibe that you weren't, like, what What was it? What was the final decision? I don't know. I don't, I, like, I just, like, I do this thing where, like, once, like, that switches off, like, there is no coming back. So it's, like, I feel like toward the end of that relationship, like, I was warning him, like, you're going to have to do more. Like, I would, like... Like he would never come here and visit. He wouldn't, I would get dressed in like whatever. And he would like never tell me like I looked good. He would constantly rag on my career. And I was just like, you're pushing me to that point where like, you're gonna lose me. Oh man. And I just, I ended it. And then he wound up, my dad had 
surgery. So I was home and he showed up the night my dad got back from John Hopkins from out of state, like, like sick. And I was just like, and like, I have dogs in the house and they were barking. My dad like just got home was trying to sleep. I was just like, this is like, what are you doing here? Like, I, this is like, no, like, no. Yeah. Well, it, good, good for you for figuring that out. You know, a lot of people don't figure that out. A lot of people try to put a, what is it, square peg in a round hole. They just like try to make it work. No, and... I can't. I can't do it. If it's not, if it's not, like I'm just, I'm going to be like a no. Do you know what your love language is? Do you know what? Makes I think you... it's compliments. Sounds like it, which I'm affirmation, same thing. Um, it's either compliments or presents. I think a lot of people, I think we're similar in that type where like you'll say what you think. And by the way, do you do stand up? Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. How's that going? I saw that online and I didn't know that. Yeah, it's good. Um, well, I haven't done it in like, I'm, I'm getting my act together so I can like go back on tour, but I headlined the Irvine Improv and like, no way. How did yeah. I remember that? Yeah. The show went really well. It was Were you nervous? really cool. Yeah. I was nervous. Oh my nervous. God. I'd shit myself. Yeah. No, it was honestly, I like opened the curtain and I was like, what the fuck did I just do to myself? Yeah. And I was, and I just like went for it and it, it went really well. I did a bunch of tight fives at the comedy store. Um, I can't believe I didn't know this. Yeah. And How I, exciting. Yeah. I love it. And then I did a show last year and that went really well. And then now I, I got back into reality TV stuff. I have a few show co- shows coming out this year and then I'm building out my, my new podcast, which is really going to be more of a late night show that you can listen to as a podcast. Great. But like, we're building my set right now and we're getting like the channels ready and like, I'm really excited. So I'm focusing on that and then I will go back on tour. Well, we'll have to know when that all comes out. Cause I'm sure my audience will be excited to check it out. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why we're trying to buy a house is because I want a barn studio or like a garage or a barn studio. Cause right now I make a ton of content out of just an extra bedroom and it's like got a green screen setup. but because I don't have that barn set up now, that's why I started drive with Dave. Cause I was like, I'm not going to let it stop me from just having good conversations. That's awesome. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of times reality TV stars are miss rep or uh, as I don't say misrepresented there. You don't get to know everything about somebody. And that's kind of what the, the thought of this conversation is, is just building some empathy and people realizing like you're someone who has a sick parent that you have to deal with too. And yeah. audiences, they, they sometimes forget that they just see uh, entitlement because you're verified on Instagram and it can be lucrative and have all these other things. But you know, that dopamine must crash very quickly. Once you, once you get that, that following, you know, like it's still a huge. I will tell you, and this goes, I, I know this is for everybody in my position on Instagram. Instagram is the most stressful and that also drives my mental health to crash and burn. Um, it is so stressful making sure your Instagram posts are perfect and making, so, you don't, so you don't lose following. And yeah. Lo- like, like losing followers. Like if your number like goes down, Oh my God, it is like so stressful. It is so I've cried endlessly over like, just make like trying to figure out what these people want. But it's so hard because like, I don't know if like I did this to myself, but like if I post something about like what I'm doing, like the engagement is not there. But if I post like a hot photo of my body. It's just like 100,000 story viewers. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Can you imagine what this does to younger women too? Obviously suicide rates are up and it's just, I mean, it's like we're, we're adults talking about it and, uh, yeah, and it's just, it's, it's tough, but I understand, uh, a lot of times with bachelor, you know, people will follow you for whatever your bachelor story is. And when you're done telling that story, they unfollow and yeah, while it it's probably, so annoying. <laughs> yeah, it's annoying. It and sucks. I know plenty of comedians, well, female comedians that have to post a bikini photo in their carousel to sell some stand up tickets. And it's like, yeah, that's part of the well, my following grew within this last year. Um, cause I've, I've been like trying new things and like different things and it still fluctuates a lot. Like, I don't know if people notice that or not, but like I freak out about it and it gives me so much anxiety. Um, just because I just like, you want to like, still feel like you're in the, in a place. And I always say this, it's like child stars go crazy and have all these issues because they were so high and so wanted and so, you know, popular at one point. And then it just like stops. And it's like, 
it is so hard to deal with that because like there was a point where I was like on the cover of every magazine and like every like I was like the most popular I would go as far as to say I was the most popular girl in the world at one point there you go that's and like the, that's the opener <laughs> literally I literally would and like it's hard to deal with like now when it calms down I mean there there's always highs and lows for like every celebrity but like it's hard to deal with have you ever um looked into how dopamine works like the feel-good hormone no. Um, th- there's a book called, the, um, what's it called? Atomic Habits. And it talks about it. And there you get dopamine from sex with new people. You get it from a compliment. You get it from a good stand-up set. You get it from being on a reality show. It's just, it's one of those things that it's not sustainable, but you can find ways to naturally like keep getting it. You know, my wife was gardening yesterday. I'm sure she felt dopamine from that. She <laughs> likes to garden. It's like, I, I, that would, I don't, I don't like that. But for me, I get that through stand up, which kind of helps me and, and oh, I get wow. it through when, when videos do well and this and that. But I only ask you that because I think it's about finding new ways to figure out what it is that makes you feel good. You know? Yeah. And while it, the thing that sucks about it is that Instagram can make you feel bad, but it's also the thing that gives you you, uh, so many opportunities. So it's kind of like a, um, one of those, like, um, yeah, it's a love hate relationship. Exactly. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you a few more questions before we go, but we're parked here. Um, I saw in an interview recently, you've got a new reality show coming out mm-hmm. with your family. Is that something that's off with topic? my family? Is, are you doing, you're not doing it with your family? Maybe, maybe not. I saw it on there are, are projects in the works with my family, but nothing I can like nothing that's like coming. Okay. Soon. And can you talk about what you do have coming out or no? So I do have a show coming out on E. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to announce that yet. Okay. Um, just cause it's not announced publicly yet, but, um, it's coming out in October. Very exciting. And then you've got your jewelry line. We already talked about all or a sugar co. We and do. What else are you, what else are you uh, working on that? What do you see selling out there? So we, me and my sister started a, designer vintage company we also do like clothing as well but like we hand curate and like collect designer vintage pieces from like the 90s and early 2000s that you like can't find and we are more affordable than a lot of the other places so like yeah and vintage is also like way more sustainable to like it's just so much more fun than like something that you can go into a store and buy and every other girl has it and is trending and it's wearing everyone's wearing it like I love vintage bags so much more than yeah. And they're made, they're they're like made better. We always talk about fast fashion and how bad it is for the environment, slave labor, and the Uyghurs are you know that's in China they're creating these things in sweat labs and it's just a mess out there. So uh, good for you for um yeah. It's eleven fifteen vintage eleven with two L's e l l e v e n one five vintage. And we'll post it in the uh, description. What else? um, What did I miss? Let me see. Let me like I wrote notes here. I've got um. Oh, there's one story we didn't get to. Um, Which. Um, you said, well, you said after Nick, after Nick's season, my heart is literally never going to be repaired. I'm guessing (laughs) it has been repaired. Yes. My heart has made a full recovery. Thank God. The only other thing I had here was this. Um, I read that your grandparents were almost victim to a faux hostage scam. Yes. Because this is going to be a big deal with, with, um, AI now, because now with AI, people can get your, your voice. So what they're doing with with artificial intelligence is anyone could get my voice and they could call my parents and say, hey, this is Dave. And then they could be like, we have your kid, you know, send 15 Yeah. Rides. So we have to alert our boomer parents and grandparents yeah. to not pray victim to this. But what? tell us what happened with you. So my dad's parents, this happened to, and they're like these little Greek people. Olympioses. The Olympioses. Yes, the Olympios, the Olympii. Nice, nice olive skin. Which by the way, our made their maiden name when they came from Greece was Michaels and they chose <laughs> to change it to Olympios. That's the most Greek. Yeah. Baklava was taken. <laughs> like literally I was like, are you serious? It's a badass name though. Yeah. No, I mean it is, but yeah, like Corinne Michaels wouldn't have been a reality star. Crazy. So anyways, I call, I don't call them grandma and grandpa. I call them the, what it is in Greek, which is Yaya and Papu. And so they, my grandmother gets a call and they're like old and like, they don't really get it. And basically the whole thing happens where they're like, we have Corinne and we need $10,000 or we're going to kill her. Like whatever my, my, and they put a girl on the phone that sounded like me. And she said that the girl kept saying grandma. 
So she was really confused because she knows that I don't call her grandma. Wow. And she like called my dad and she was like hysterical. I happened to be home in Miami at the time and I was sitting right next to my dad. My dad was like, calm down. Corinne is literally sitting right next to me. And I like got on the phone. She's like, oh my God. Like I, I've never been so scared in my life. She was so, like, they almost gave them like a heart attack. And it was so scary for them. It's so terrible that people would do this, but you know, she was smart and she knew that like, I don't use the word grandma for her. All because you were on a reality show and they could Google who you are. Yeah. And like, they, was. like people know my family. It's like whatever. And like, they just thought they could get away with something like that. And you know, people are just stupid. Wild story. Well, look, thank you so much for taking the time to do Driving with Dave here. Come back anytime when I got the Tesla. I would love to. I would love to, <laughs> to do a, a little uh, reboot of this. Yes. When you have the Tesla. We, we got the, the deep dive on you and you're going to have so much coming out. So I'm really excited to get to know you. And yeah, thanks again. I, I really appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. All right. Um, uh, let's